Hello friends and fellow collectors, thanks for joining me for another episode of Diecast Emporium. In this video, I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing and review of the brand new for 2024 uh, Heavy Haul Replicas Max Superliner Heavy Spec Tandem Axle Tractor in Red over Red. Uh, this model, the item number is HHR138F-1. You can still pick this up as of the time that I am filming this review from the Heavy Haul Replicas website. However, they are running low on stock, so if you want one, don't wait. Click on the link in the video's description. So, as with the RD800s that we've seen before, they come in this brown outer shipping box, which is labeled Heavy Haul Replicas. The only way to differentiate which of the 21 different Superliners is in the box is by the item number, which I've already mentioned here. Be very careful when you open these, obviously. The message, do not use blades to open, is kind of a catch-22. The reason it's there is because there's no styrofoam and you don't want to cut into this black box. Uh, but obviously, you need to get into the box somehow, so you're probably going to end up using a X-Acto knife or a modeling knife. Alright, here is the model's actual box, black with the MAC logo. On the bottom, we can see the MAC officially licensed product sticker, the Heavy Haul Replicas logo, and all of the different copyright information. If you are interested in that, please pause the video. For the rest of us, we're going to get this thing open. Okay, we've got one side flap started here. The model is housed between two pieces of styrofoam, which is, which is rather, tape all the way around. So again, just use a little bit of care. Again, use a knife to take this all the way around. Lift the top off. The top is marked with the arrow. All these trucks are packaged extremely well inside the styrofoam with lots of extra packaging material, such as tissue paper designed to protect the model and its paintwork. This is a pointer tool you can use to help open the cab doors as well as the hood. Over here in this section is a extra set of mirrors should you need them. Be careful what you grab onto because there are some very fragile pieces on these trucks as they are super high-end models, so just use some care. Once you have removed the tape that's keeping the doors closed, as well as the tape that's keeping the lines taped down during shipping, your model is ready to be displayed. As you're getting a good 360 degree view of the model, allow me to go over some details of it. It is 150 scale, it measures 6 inches long by 2.3 inches wide by 2.8 inches tall. Only 125 have been commissioned in the red over red scheme. It is made of die cast construction with sparing use of other materials for detail and function. It is an accurately configured and decorated rig to accurately replicate the real truck. Functions and features overview include a tilting hood to reveal detailed engine, opening cab doors, both obviously the driver's side and the passenger side. This particular truck, the heavy haul spec trucks anyway, have the real chains on the headache rack. It has a sliding, tilting, and locking fifth wheel, detailed interior with suspension air ride seats, steerable rolling wheels with front and rear axle suspension, air and electrical lines are designed to fit most 150th scale trailers. So for example, if you have the WSI or SWORD trailers, these will fit perfectly. Uh, if you have a Diecast Masters trailer uh, or a first gear trailer, you may have to do some modifying to get them to fit, but shouldn't be any big deal. The mud flaps are also rubber, and a pick tool, this right here, is included to assist you with opening the cab doors and the hood. As I said during the introduction, the model retails for $239 on the Heavy Haul Replicas website. I will post a link to it in the video's description. These are going very, 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 very quickly. And uh, the red version of the RD800 sold out was one of the first colors to, so to sell out. So again, if, you're wait if you want to get one, don't wait. I wouldn't want you guys, uh, as a collector myself, to have the opportunity to have missed out on one of these. All right, those are the details and features overview. When we come back, we'll take a look at the truck up close and personal and see some of those details. One of the more obvious details, I think, but some collectors, particularly those that may be new, uh, you may think all 21 of these Superliners are exactly the same, aside from the different liveries and colors. That is not true. Uh, aside from many of them being different years, the trucks themselves are different designs. So, for example, the Di Berardini's one, uh, this one, is not a heavy haul spec, it's just a tandem axle tractor, whereas the red over red is a uh, heavy haul spec tandem tractor. You can clearly see the difference with the headache rack, uh, the wheels and axle layouts, the size of the tires, etc, etc. So I just wanted to point that out real quickly. Let's start our details overview by taking a look at the gorgeous red paint. You can see that the wheels have a silver uh, axle hub cover, and the ones in the rear are painted red. 
The tires are rubber and have a realistic tread pattern. You can see chrome is used all over the model and it's not overdone. I think it's a good mix of where chrome is used and where it isn't. Moving the truck towards the front, you can see the iconic Mack Superliner front end with the Bulldog. The Bulldog on this version uh, is chrome, unlike the Bulldog on the DiBerardini Superliner, which happens to be gold. Other decals include the Superliner decal, the Mack logo. Moving along, you can see the different mirrors. You can see the mirrors here, as well as the main mirrors with the aerials on them. Here is your hood latch. Your carry hand, or your grab handle, I should say, your door latch, your exhaust. The steps have the steps inside the cab, which you can barely see, but at the bottom you can see that they are etched through and have actual holes in them. The fender well covers also are chrome and look quite good. Moving towards the back, the impressive detailing continues with the MAC mud flaps you can see here. One of the best aspects of this model, and there are many is the headache rack. You can see the chains here. They're all individual pieces and you can move them. If we can zoom in just a little bit, you can get a better look at that. There you go. So once again, I'll bring the pointer over and you can see that you can move them, which is awesome. Here's your lines, which you can plug into the back of a trailer when not in use. Uh, again, here's your headache rack, your main warning light, some, all, some other small lights here. That brings us back to the right side where you can see the air cleaner, which also has a chrome top to it. Looking underneath the truck, a lot of people enjoy seeing the chassis details of these models. This Superliner is certainly no exception. This also gives you a good opportunity to see the tread pattern detail on the tires. And if we go the other way, here's what the top down view looks like. Again, with the hood, the cab, the light, and working our way to the back, you can see the diamond plated texturing, along with the airlines, the fifth wheel, which does slide, and the fender wells. All right, that's the details. When we come back, we'll take a look at the functionality. For the first part of our functionality test, let's see how well the truck rolls. In forward or reverse, it rolls just fine. It does have working steering. It is notched. Uh, it does seem like the front axle wants to lock up a little bit when the truck steers to the left. And also when it steers to the right. It seems though when it's notched and locked in that position, the wheels clash on the fender wells. Obviously, these models are meant to be posed and not played with, so for most collectors, that won't be a major issue. Another bit of functionality is the sliding fifth wheel, should you want to move it to accommodate other trailers. You can see that I am sliding it both forwards and backwards. These airlines, again, can accommodate most low boy trailers from WSI, at least the US-style low boy trailers from WSI, and also the trailers from 10, 15 years ago from Sword Models. All right, let's take a look at what the hood does. Here you can open it up. And here's the detail of all the mechanical components inside. Pretty sharp. Not quite done yet. As we can open our cab doors, don't do it the way I'm doing it. Not recommended. Use the pointer tool. But you can open up the cab doors and get a good look inside. So there's that side. Very carefully we'll open up the other side so you can get a look at the passenger side. So... Those are the working features of the model. Again, everything you'd want to see on a tractor works on here. The fifth wheel, uh, the, the steering, the doors, everything that you'd want to see works on this truck. Nothing to complain about there. We'll wrap up the video with what this truck looks like attached to a trailer. In this case, I've gone with the Sword Nelson Ramp Trailer. I have a couple pieces of Diecast Masters paving equipment. The roller is a CB13. The asphalt paver is an AP655F. Both of these models are discontinued and no longer made. But as you can see, this is another trailer option that you can use with the truck. And quite honestly, it looks quite impressive and makes a great display in the display cabinet. That'll wrap it up for this Diecast Emporium review. Thank you all so very much for watching. Again, in conclusion, it can't be said enough. These Max Superliners by Heavy Haul Replicas are, again, a, another step forward in what's possible in the 150 scale trucking market. They are not inexpensive, but again, you get what you pay for. It's that famous old adage. If you have been looking to add one to your collection, certainly don't wait. They tend to sell out really, really quickly, and they're only going to go up in value. Check out my other videos, which are, on your, which are on your screen right now. Easy for me to say. And until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.